Tropical Storm Matt on, Philippine named Florita set to make landfall in Luzon. Substantially intensifying, although still looking a little bit uh, ragged on the satellite imagery, is Tropical Storm Maon, Philippine name Florita, currently at 16.5 north, 123.6 degrees east. Right now, winds of around 60 miles per hour, uh, with a pressure of around 989 millibars, moving west northwest at 11 miles per hour, same as yesterday actually as of 9 p.m. Philippine time this August 22nd, moving very close now to the coast of eastern Luzon. Landfall expected shortly or soon. Here it is uh, displayed on the map with its wind field and uh, gales extending out around 70 nautical miles in three directions, just not so much on the northwestern side right now. Signal 2 warnings for quite a large area of Luzon right now. We'll have a graphical depiction later in the video. It's currently 138 kilometers from Palanan, 169 from Casiguran, 235 from Chugagaro, 324 from Baguio, and 356 from the capital Manila. Signal 1 warnings extend further south as well. Not quite as far as Manila, but not far away for parts of Laguna, for instance. Uh, and Camarines Norte. Flash flooding is still the main concern from this storm with a further 400 millimeters of expected rainfall in the western part of Luzon. Uh, so extremely high rain rates set to continue on the southern side of the storm's center. Dangerous flash flooding and landslides is expected and probably occurring in some areas right now. Here's the forecast over the next few days. This is what we expect moving through northwestwards into the South China Sea. At the moment, best indications are for a landfall very close to Hong Kong before continuing westwards through southern China. There's still a lot of uncertainty about the forecasted track, so I wouldn't read too much into that just yet, uh, but it would appear that way at the moment. Here is that graphical depiction of those Signal 2 warnings in yellow and the blue Signal 1 warnings there and the wind estimate spread there from the various different agencies JMA of course going with 50 miles per hour as is Pegasa uh, we are currently at 60 miles per hour thanks to uh, an earlier reading from ASCA supporting that strength JTWC still a little bit lower though at 45 Here's the latest Pegasa cone showing the expected storm track. Well, actually, it doesn't look like the latest one. That's an earlier cone. Uh, but still, you can see that not too much has changed from that, just that the storms end up further south. Uh, there could still be a pronounced jog to the north, and that's something we'll be watching out for very closely. Now, as we look at the computer models, we can take a look at what is expected here. So the storm ventures northwestwards, once again moving close to Hong Kong and eventually making landfall in southern China and then moving inland and it's pretty much gone by the time we get to probably day four. In the short term though it's looking decent on the GFS model as a matter of fact it initializes the storm quite a bit stronger than it currently is, initializes it near typhoon strength. I'm not sure that's currently the case. Um, here is the water vapor imagery and you can see here uh, the yellow zones there showing where the really high amounts of moisture are and you can see it trailing along the coast of China so we could be looking at very high rain amounts there as well if that kind of scenario was to take place. Don't forget the southern side is going to for the most part be the wettest side so if the storm as is likely makes landfall somewhere on the southern coast of China uh, towards Hong Kong then south of there is going to get uh, further west is going to get a lot of rainfall on that south coast. And here is the expected rainfall accumulations and you see that progression up to the seven day marker 
Uh, not as bad as what it was looking like yesterday, although I'm not sure how much rain has already fallen in the Philippines, but it's currently calling for a further around 400 millimeters or so at an extreme 16 inches in one or two locations there along the western part of the Philippines. And then as you move on into China, totals are getting close to 10 inches there as well, 250 millimeters. So the rain threat is absolutely a significant one. Not forgetting the winds though of course, they are going to get very gusty up to 60 miles per hour right now and possibly higher when it reaches China. Sea surface temperatures underneath this storm are looking fairly decent around 29 degrees Celsius in the South China Sea, maybe even a little bit warmer getting towards 30 degrees and if it does end up in the Gulf of Tonkin uh, then it could even be pushing 31 degrees by the time it gets in there. But nonetheless, uh, warm sea surface temperatures all around is not going to be a significant issue for this storm at any point. Here's a look at some satellite imagery of how the storm's been progressing recently and as you can see that profile of lots of convection on the southern side but big gaps there still on the northern side uh, is continuing. Um, obviously under that convection there will be a lot of rainfall occurring uh, although the western side of the storm you know when you look towards the western Philippines it doesn't look like a huge amount there at the moment of course we saw that models are indicating the massive amounts of rain to be on the western side of the island uh, but there we are we've not got any visible or geo color imagery at the moment because for some reason uh, the servers have stopped working Here's another view from Ram's imagery and you can see once again that progression of that convection really blowing up there, quite um, impressive cloud tops that are blew up there briefly reaching well into the 90s in some uh, little hot towers there. And this can show off a little bit more that circulation as well which was exposed at the beginning of this loop but gets covered by that um, convection towards the end. So perhaps it is fighting back against the wind shear and it's certainly getting stronger as it closes in those few miles before reaching the eastern coast of the Philippines. Still doesn't look like it's making a turn to the north yet, so it looks like we're going to see a landfall along the coast of Isabella.